Today's video is a part of a three-part series about creating a chess game. In the first part, we will take a look at the game architecture and the class diagram, create a simple scene and implement board generation. In the second part, we will implement the movement for each piece type and implement a board class. In the last part, we will handle the winning conditions, castling move and pawn promotion. The next part will be available in exactly a week. Let's begin. Here we can see the whole architecture of our chess game. It looks quite scary at the first glance, so let's break it down into parts. The main four classes that work together to manage the game are chess game controller, board, piece and chess player. The board class works with the piece class. The piece class is an abstract class, so the board is agnostic to what type of piece it is working with. It opens up possibilities for some wacky chess with weird piece types without changing the board script. Each piece type inherits the piece class and has to implement the select available squares method that describes piece behavior. The piece class also has a component called material setter, which changes a material on a renderer to separate black pieces from white ones. The board handles clicks by the board input handler, which works with an input system. Our input system separates receiving input from calling actions based on that input. It's done by having an abstract class responsible for receiving input from different areas of the game, like UI clicks and clicks on colliders, from input handlers which implement an interface, in result, receiving input just calls handlers to do their job without knowing what exactly their implementations are. The board generation is executed by the chess game controller which uses a board layout object. The board layout class is a scriptable object that stores data about what piece occupies which square at the start of the game. The chess game controller also uses the piece creator class that instantiates pieces and holds references to a black and a white materials. The board also has a component called square selector creator which is responsible for showing possible moves for a piece. And lastly, each piece has a component of type iObjectWinner which is an interface with a method responsible for moving pieces. That way we can implement different types of piece movement without making any changes to the piece script. As we can see, our architecture works with layers of abstraction which helps in the coupling code and facilitates extensibility. The board class works with the abstract piece class and is decoupled from each piece implementation. The piece class works with a tweener interface so that moving pieces is decoupled from selecting available spaces and the code called on input is decoupled from code that receives input. That gives us flexibility to be modular in selecting actions taken when some input happens. Let's begin by creating an empty 3D project and download some free assets to create a simple chess setup. In the scene there is a camera to give a player perspective and a default directional light. The level object consists of two chair objects, a table, a floor and an empty game object to act as a parent of a board game object. The board itself has a parent game object with a box collider component on it, a child game object with renderer component that is a visual representation of a board and an empty game object that defines where the bottom left square is positioned. It will help with spawning pieces. Now let's create every script that was defined in our class diagram I will quickly skip through it, otherwise it would get really boring. Let's start implementing our game with the part responsible for the board generation. We will start with the chess game controller, the piece creator and the board layout classes. 
In the description you can find a link to the class diagram so you can take a look at any time if you get lost with the architecture. But before all that we will need two more enums for team color and piece type. Team color will have only two values for black and white team. Piece type will have six values to represent each chess piece, so pawn, bishop, knight, rook, queen and king. Let's start implementing the first class called board layout. This class will be a scriptable object, so let's add the create menu asset attribute for this class. This class will hold an array of objects of type board square setup. Let's write that class as a private class inside the board layout class, because only this class will use objects of type board square setup. The board square setup class will have three public fields to describe coordinates of the board, a piece type occupying this square, and a team color that this piece belongs to. Next, let's add an array of square setups. That will be the only field in this class. Now we can declare all of the methods described in the class diagram. We will need a method that returns the array length, a method that returns coordinates from a square, a method that returns the piece name from a square, and a method that returns the team color from a square. Let's implement those methods now. The getPieceCount method will simply return the length of the board squares array. The get square coordinates at index will return coordinates of the board square setup object from the board squares array. But first it will check if you are not passing an index outside of the board squares array range. If so, we will log an error and return coordinates with values lower than zero. In the returned coordinates we will return values subtracted by one to convert one to eight values to 0 to 7 values. In the get square piece name at index method we will add the same check but this time we will return an empty string and if the index in the parameter is correct we will return the piece name from the board square. Going with that logic we will implement the get square team color at index. Back in Unity we will create a new folder called data that will contain board layout objects. Let's create a layout object called starting board layout. Now let's fill the values for the standard starting chess board layout. The next class to implement is the chess game controller class that will take data from a board layout object and based on that data will generate a board. Each game will start in the start new game method, so let's declare it and call it in the start method. First thing to do is to create pieces based on a board layout, so let's declare such a method with a board layout as a parameter. Let's also add a serializable field to refer a board layout object. Next we will use the for loop to iterate through the layout's board squares array. Then we will pull out data about each square to separate variables. Let's also rename some methods in the board layout class because there are some mistakes in their names. because the piece creator will create pieces chosen by a type passed in the parameter, let's convert the type name to the type object. Next, we can create a method that based on the data that we just pulled out from the board layout, creates a single piece and initializes it with that data. To create a new piece game object, we need to call the piece creator, so let's add it as a private field to the class. Because the piece creator is going to be a component on the chess game controller, 
let's cache it in the awake method and add a require component attribute to the class declaration. Now let's go back to our method and call the create piece method from the piece creator that takes a type of piece passed in its parameter to determine which prefab to choose. Before we go any further, let's quickly write the piece creator class. It will be a short one. So the piece creator will need to store an array of piece prefabs and two materials for black and white pieces. Let's also add a dictionary that will map the prefab piece type name to the piece prefab. This dictionary will help us to select the proper prefab more efficiently. Now let's declare all the necessary methods, so the awake method, the create piece method that takes a type as the parameter, and the get team material method that takes a team color as a parameter. In the awake method, we'll fill our dictionary with piece type names as keys and piece prefabs as values. In the create piece method, we will first choose the proper prefab based on the type passed in the parameter. There is one caveat here. The values in the piece type enum have to match names of classes derived from the piece class. So the enum values responsible for defining a rook have to have the same name as a rook class. If we find the proper prefab, we instantiate it and return it, otherwise we return null. The getTeamMaterial will simply return the white material if the parameter is white and the black material if the parameter is black. We are all done with the piece creator class and we will go back to the chess game controller class. Now, after creating a piece game object using the piece creator class, Let's try to initialize it with square coordinates, a team color and a board. Because we don't have any reference to a board object yet, let's add it as a serializable field. Now to be able to set data in the piece object, we need to declare such a method in the piece class. Let's write the whole piece API right away. First, let's write down all fields that this class will need. First, a reference to the material setter component a property for a board object with a protector getter, a property to store the occupied square coordinates, a property to store the assigned team, a boolean flag that will hold the information about the first piece movement, let's add a private setter to it, and a list of vector to int values that will store all available moves for a given piece at a given time. We will also need a reference to an eye object tweener, an object responsible for moving pieces. We will implement it in the future part. The meat of this class is the abstract class called select available squares that each piece will implement differently. And of course, the piece class is also an abstract class. We will take a closer look at that method in the second part. Now let's write the whole piece API like in the class diagram. Most of the methods are helpful methods and will be used by another classes in later videos. Let's go through them one by one. In the wake method, we will first initialize the available moves list and set the component references for a tweener and material setter object. Let's also add a require component attribute for them. In the setMaterial method, we will just call the material setter component to change the renderer's material. Let's quickly implement the material setter class. This class will require a mesh renderer component, so let's add the required component attribute. We will just need a reference to the mesh renderer component, so let's make it a property that will call getComponent when the mesh renderer is null. The only method here will be the setSingleMaterial method, which will just set a mesh renderer material to the one passed in the parameter. Now, back in the piece class, the isFromSameTeam method will compare the team color value to the team color of the piece passed in the parameter. 
the can move to method will check if the value passed in the parameter exists in the available moves list. We will skip the move piece method right now. We'll go back to it when working on twinner objects. The try to add move method will just add the parameter value to the available moves list. And the set data method will assign the parameters to the proper fields and set the transforms position based on the past coordinates. The position will be calculated per the board object because it is the only one that knows about its size. Back in the chess game controller, we can now finish our piece creation process. Let's now select the proper material and set it in the new piece object. The last thing that we have to program is the calculate position from coordinates method in the board class. To convert coordinates to word position, we need to know two things. The position of one of the squares, let's say the bottom left one, and the size of a single square. So let's add those values in the class fields. Now we can convert coordinates to word position by adding the bottom left square position to a new vector of 3 with x equals to coords.x times square size and z equals coords.y times square size. Back in UD, let's add an empty game object called Game Master and add the chess game controller component to it. As we can see, the piece creator component was also added because we added the require component attribute to the class definition. Now let's add two materials for black and white pieces. So create a new folder and put those materials in there. Assign those materials in the piece creator inspector. Also assign the starting board layout object in the proper field in the chess game controller inspector. Now the board, find the board object in the scene and add a board component to it. Select the bottom left squared game object and let's take a look at where it is positioned. Now try to move it to the next square and as we can see the square size is about 1.5 units. With that information go back to the board component and set that value as a square size in the inspector. Back in the chess game controller let's add the last reference to the board game object. Now the piece prefabs. So let's create a new folder called prefabs. Next, find the pieces prefabs in the downloaded assets and move them to our new folder. We will change their names to match the piece component name that they will be connected to. Also, let's remove the collider component from them. We don't need them. Before we add proper piece components to them, let's open every one of them and inherit the piece class. Let's do it now because the piece class has some required components that will be automatically added. I can see that the material setter has the mesh renderer reference visible in the inspector. It is unnecessary, so let's remove the serializable field attribute from the field declaration. Now let's finish adding those components. After that, select the game master game object and add all of the pieces prefabs to the prefabs list in the piece creator inspector. I myself stumbled into a problem. The material setter reference gets lost when being called by the setMaterial method, even though the material setter reference is cached properly in the awake method. If you have any idea why that happens, please let me know in the comments. I added a not so pretty fix that checks if the material setter reference is not null, and if so, it caches it again. We are all done with the board generation, so let's press play and take a look. And as we can see, the board is generated based on the board layout. To confirm this, let's change one of the pawns position in the starting board layout asset and press play again. Now, one of the white pawns is moved two squares ahead, which is a start to the queen's gambit. This is the end of the first part. In the next one, we will implement the board and movement for each piece. And as always, you can find the whole project on GitHub in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. Also leave a comment, I am happy to answer all of your questions. Take care.